If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. Why don't we go ahead and draw a picture that's showing this sled filled with wood as it's pulled up the hill. And so in purple we have shown the sled and we've labeled it MS to represent the mass of that sled and then the little brown square here is the mass of the wood. Now after drawing this pretty rudimentary picture we're going to draw the forces that are acting on our object here, our system if you will. And perhaps the most obvious force is the gravitational force which points straight down. Now the thing about a ramp is that although the gravitational force which we can call FG for now does point straight down, it's best to actually take that force and break it into its Y and its X components. So let's show those two components. So here is what we could call the Y component. Notice that it's perpendicular to the surface of the ramp so that this forms a 90 degree angle right here. And then we have the component of the gravitational force that's parallel to the surface of the ramp. We might call that the X component. And whenever we have an object on an incline, the component that's parallel to the surface of the ramp is always going to be the gravitational force times the sine of whatever angle the incline is making with the horizontal, which we can call theta. Very important, so I'll say that again. Whenever you have an object on an incline, the component that is parallel to the surface is always going to be the gravitational force times the sine of theta. The component of the gravitational force that's perpendicular is always going to be Fg times the cosine of the angle. These two ideas could be proved, but for now, it's, it's easiest just to take my word for it. And so, those are the two components of the gravitational force, but we have other forces acting as well. We have John, who is pulling this sled up the hill, and so we can mark that force as Fp. And since our sled and wood is pressing down against the surface of the ramp, the ramp, in response, will press upward on our objects, and that is actually called the normal force, so we'll have Fn. But then there's also some kinetic friction as this sled is being pulled up the ramp. So we're going to have yet another force. And since the sled is being pulled up the ramp, the kinetic friction will oppose that motion and point down the ramp. So because our picture is a little cluttered, we'll kind of slide it up here. But this is going to be the kinetic friction force. And again, it's pointing down the surface of the ramp. We can call that Fk. Now, after drawing those forces acting on the sled, we're going to apply Newton's second law in both the x and the y direction. Now, Newton's second law simply tells us to take the sum of all forces acting in the x direction and set that equal to the mass of our object multiplied by its acceleration in the x direction. Now, remember, the x direction would be parallel to the surface of the ramp. Now, presumably, actually, in this question, the acceleration is going to equal zero. The question does not mention that John is going to be pulling the sled with any type of acceleration. So we can assume this is zero. If we plug zero in for the acceleration, then we actually have the sum of the forces in the x direction equaling zero. Now, over in the y direction, we're going to say the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. But once again, the objects are not accelerating either off the surface of the ramp or down into the surface of the ramp. So in other words, the acceleration is zero in the y direction as well. So we can say the sum of the forces is equal to zero. Now let's actually stay at the y direction and notice there are two forces. We have the Fn, which we could say is pointing in the positive direction. And then we have the Fg cos theta, which we can say is pointing in the negative direction. So we'll actually say minus Fg cos theta. And we'll be setting that equal to zero. Notice we can actually solve this equation for the normal force, which we will see will be useful later. So let's add the Fg cos theta over to the right hand side. And we can see that the normal force indeed equals Fg cos theta. This is a result that we're going to want to hold on to and we will refer back to it shortly. Moving over to the x direction and we could arbitrarily call up the ramp the positive x direction and down the ramp the negative x direction. So we would have the pulling force which would be positive since it's pointing up the ramp. So we can plug that into the sum of the forces. And then these two forces Fk and Fg sine theta they're both pointing down the ramp so they'll both be negative. So we'll have minus Fk and then minus Fg sine theta. And again we're assuming the sum of the forces is equal to zero. 
Now it turns out that FK can be substituted with a different expression. We know that kinetic friction is equal to a constant, which is symbolized by mu k, times a normal force. So we can make that substitution in the equation. But let's not forget that the normal force was solved earlier and it was equal to Fg times cosine theta. So what we'll do is replace this normal force with the expression Fg times cosine theta. Now we want to talk about the Fg. It turns out we can replace that as well. Now Fg is equal to mass times gravity. But what we have to remember is that our mass was composed of two objects. We had the mass of the wood plus the mass of the sled. So we just have to make sure for the mass we include both of those for that mass. So let's go ahead and replace Fg with this expression right here. We're going to have to do that for this Fg as well as this Fg. Now remember our goal is to solve for the mass of the wood and one way of doing that would be to try to isolate MW. Another way would be to plug in the numbers and then try to isolate it. We'll go for the latter approach. So let's go to the pushing force and we can see it's 1400 newtons so we're going to be plugging in 1400 newtons and we'll actually drop the symbol newtons just for the sake of clarity. Mu K had a value of 0.13 And then the mass of the wood we don't know. And if you'd like, we could just call it x for now, just to simplify it. The mass of the sled was stated to be 16 kilograms. So we can fill that in. And then we have multiplied by 9.8 times the cosine of the angle was 22 degrees. And then we have minus, again, the mass of the wood is unknown. We can call that x plus the sled's mass, which was 16 times g, which is 9.8, and then times the sine of 22. Now if you'd like you can pick up your calculator and multiply 0.13 by 9.8 cosine of 22 and when you do that you should get about 1.181 and then we still have the term x plus 16 here and then you can multiply 9.8 by the sine of 22 and when you do that you should get about 3.671 and that'll be multiplied again by x plus 16 and it turns out that we have like terms actually. This is a like term with this because they both contain x plus 16. And because they're like terms, we can actually add the coefficients. It's sort of like if you had negative 5y plus 10y, and you were going to combine those, you could just add the negative 5 and the 10 to make 5, and then you'd stick the y out in front. This is effectively the same thing. So we're going to combine this coefficient of negative 1.181 with this negative 3.671 and then we'll leave the x plus 16 in front, just like we left the y in front. So this would become 4.852 times x plus 16. Why don't we go ahead and subtract the 1400 over to the other side. And so when we do that, we're going to have negative 1400 over here. We'll divide both sides by the negative 4.852. We get 288.52. And then finally, we can subtract 16 from both sides. And when we do that, we get about 272.52, and that'll be in kilograms. And if you want, you can round that to 273. So this would be the correct answer to the question.